Hi everyone, long time no see. This is Irene with Girl Talks Fish and I originally made this video for members only but I figured I'd want to share with all of you you know kind of how I'm doing because if you didn't know I had a stress-related health diagnosis recently and I've been trying to take it easier after work and relax more which means some of my aquariums aren't as getting as much attention as they used to so i figured i'd take you around all my tanks and show you how they look hello members i wanted to give you a quick tour of all my tanks i haven't cleaned them before him at all because i wanted to show you kind of what happens to my aquariums when i'm you know not taking care of them diligently. Like the fish are being fed, the water quality is being checked, but really I'm not doing a lot of water changes, clearly, as you can see. So the main thing you can tell on my tanks is a lot of my tanks, the evaporation line is way low. Even with a lid that's pretty tight fitting, The it's just really dry in Colorado. So that's usually the main thing that happens. Um, there is, let me show you. There is algae growing on some of the floating plants slash aquarium lilies, but you can see that the front wall is pretty clean except for like a little streak over here that I didn't get the last time I scraped it. But I did get a new tool I don't know if you're a long time member to the channel or not, but the best tool for removing algae off of glass tanks like the walls is this six inch razor blade just going down the walls and it just comes off like slicing through butter. However, I personally don't like getting my hands wet, um, especially since in the winter time and in the fall, I'm having to put lotion and oils on my hands all the time to keep them from cracking. And then I have to wash it all off in order to stick it, my hands in there and then have to take my hands out and then like reapply everything. So I found this, I think it's a Seachem algae scraper and it has a little blade that comes out like this. It is definitely not as easy to use as just having the razor blade directly in my hand. However, you can see it's quite long. I don't have to have my hand in the water at all. And it's really easy for these like quick, you know, I'm gonna just gonna clean this little spot right now. Do, 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 do. Sorry, Killy, Ugh, go away. Ginkgo! <laughs> so the difference with the Seachem, like, or any kind of like rod based um, algae scraper is I find I have to go over it several times. I don't know if it's just because of the angle I'm going at or the sharpness of the blade or what. Oh, that's not too bad. See, really quick. I could even do the sides if I wanted to. Um, and it just comes right off. And again, this is a little better because the first time I used it, the algae had been really, really, really built up. And so it took several passes for me to, um, get all the algae off and you can see it's a little bit harder like in the corners if I don't want to like cut the silicone or whatever but all in all it's not too bad if I just want to spot clean really quickly like I said I saw those brown streaks over there and I was like sure I might as well just take care of them the next tank we have over here is the brackish water tank. It still has the new aquascape I, don't know, I wouldn't call it aquascape and it still has the new scape that I put together and I would say that um, Notch is exploring a little more of the tank. And here, let me try to raise the camera so you can see him. So not sure if you can see, but Alex's tail is kind of drooping off of the rock over here, the fake decoration over here. And then Notch is over here, that little gray blob. <laughs> Anyways, they're doing pretty well. As you can see, there's not a lot of algae growth at all kind of a combination of I don't have any live plants in this aquarium right now so I don't really turn on the light except to look at them and also we have the narite snails that are doing an excellent job obviously you can see in the back there is some eggs <laughs> being laid but they're pretty easy to take off with the um, razor blade which I'll do if they get on the front panel but so far it's been on the back and it isn't too bad but yeah basically all I have to do is just look for evaporation. So what I look for is I want the water level 
to be a little bit higher than this rock over here so that the entire rock is completely like this flat, sorry, plain is completely covered in water at all times. Just a slight amount so that the mud skippers are always um, moist. Because otherwise, if the water, if this rock is out of water, um, they will actually climb to the lower levels to get uh, damp. So, and then yes, the bumblebee gobies are doing great. I actually, ah, I really love them. <laughs> Over here, we still have the kids tank, which is doing great, except for the giant evaporation line. So I'm definitely gonna have to take care of that. But I am really surprised at how well the Anubias are doing. So you can see these large leaves are the ones that originally came with. And then at the base, they have like a lot of smaller new leaves. And basically these Anubias get almost no light at all. So, and the problem is I can't put this light up here on a timer because it's part of the aquarium lid kit and you have to use this remote in order to turn on the light so it doesn't work with a timer which is kind of bad but uh, I, I had heard that Anubias can live in like extremely extremely low light conditions and you can see like they're actually pretty green um, I don't have to fertilize this tank a lot because they're not consuming a lot because there's not a lot of light and they're also low slow growing plants but the thing I don't like about this tank is we got rid of the uh, glowfish, the Pristella tetras, and we still have the Sturbi Cories. No, sorry, the False Julii Cories. There's one like right there. I don't know if you can see them. Um, as well as Snowy, the snail is crawling on that plant right now. But both the Pristella tetras and the False Julii Cories. Um, are very, very shy. So as soon as I come here, like I have, I don't know, like seven or eight of these, um, and they are all hiding behind the fake plants, which is crazy because there's no bullies, um, but that's the way it is. So I'm thinking about getting rid of the false Julia Corys, giving them, you know, just donating them to the fish store, and then we'll see um so i've got a couple options so we've got the 15 gallon cube over here so if you're new to the member program you may not have seen the videos where i recently got rid of my five gallon planted tank which had chili resboras in it and clown quilly fish and that kind of thing but i wanted to get more serious about working on my breeders award program through the Colorado Aquarium Society and a lot of you know local fish clubs have this kind of thing but previously I had some fancy guppies in here and I just got rid of all of them because the next generation of juveniles were starting to look pregnant and I got really scared that I would never be able to get rid of them so uh, I gave them away on Craigslist and then when I asked my kids what fish I should try next my son really wanted ember tetras, which I've never kept before. And I know his favorite color is orange, but these are kind of like a translucent orange color. Not that vibrant in my opinion, but he really likes them. I happen to find a bunch of them at Petco. So just got them yesterday and they are in this quarantine tank slash breeding tank. And I watched this excellent presentation by, oh, what is his name? It starts with an R last name Carey, I think, C-A-R-E-Y, but he did a presentation for the Aquarium Co-op Club on breeding egg scatters. So I am going to try his trapping method of collecting the eggs and raising them, and then I will move the adults into the 15-gallon cube once they have laid eggs so that they won't predate on their own young. But that is the plan. The more I watch the Ember Tetras, they're kind of growing on me, the way they just kind of school back and forth. I hope that's just not new fish behavior. It's because it's really cool. But yeah, I am still officially on hiatus until I get this stress-related health diagnosis under control. I've definitely been doing a lot of praying, spending time with God, family, and friends. I've been reading a book called Trusting God so that I can again, work on this stress issue I have. But yeah, if you would like to 
see more of me during this time, you can become a member for $2.99 a month. And I basically do vlog style videos like this. Most of the time I'm not on the camera. If I am, it's completely makeup free, it's super chill, usually pretty short, but you get updates like seeing the fancy guppies that I never showed on the channel. You got to see those. So uh, I hope you are all doing well. You have a wonderful Thanksgiving and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.